All right guys, here's your second Keystone review video. This one will be on prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells, and it will take our eukaryotic cells and compare the plant cells to the animal cells. So to start off, I'm going to start to draw our prokaryotic cell, and I'm also gonna to start to draw our eukaryotic cell. So animal here, well, plants over here. And like I said, just to begin, I'm gonna to start to draw these cells, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make them into like uh, empty containers right now. And I'm only going to worry about things that are similar in all three of our cells. So these are things that every single organism, whether they're prokaryotic or eukaryotic, are going to have inside their cells. To start off, each one of them is gonna have a cell membrane. Now prokaryotes, they are gonna be slightly circular, like bacteria, things like that. Animal cells, they're gonna be circular as well. But the plant cell, this is gonna be more square. Okay. But regardless, all of these are the cell membrane. So we've got a cell membrane here. And then these are both our cell membranes. Okay. So again, guys, these are things that are only similar in every single one of our cells. So um, they're all going to have cell membranes. They're all going to have DNA, but the DNA is going to be a little bit different in each one. For our prokaryotic cell, we're going to have our DNA, and it's going to be long. And instead of having a lot of um, DNA, like we would in our eukaryotic cells, we're only, going to be ha we're only going to have one very long DNA, and if we were to unravel that long strand of DNA, it would actually form a very big circle for our prokaryotic cell. So DNA, we have one, and it's circular. Okay. Um, a little different for our animal and plant cells compared to our prokaryotic cells. We're going to have our nucleus here, and inside of our nucleus, we're going to have our nucleolus there. We'll fill that on this one too. Nucleus, nucleolus. And our DNA is going to be inside there. Okay? okay? And for plants and animals, the DNA, we're going to have many of them. And instead of being circular, they're going to be linear. Okay, so that's our DNA. And since I have these up, I may as well label the nucleus and the nucleolus. Do the same thing over here. All right. So again, guys, they're all going to have cell membranes. They're all going to have DNA. In each one of them, I'm not going to write this in, but we're going to have a jelly-like material in each one of our cells, um, and that's going to be our cytoplasm. So that's going to be in all three. And then lastly, each one of them is going to have ribosomes. So let me draw those in here. They're going to be kind of scattered everywhere throughout our cell. So there's our ribosomes. And they're going to be mainly to make proteins. That's their main function. Okay. Um, difference here though, between location, we're still going to have some free ribosomes scattered throughout our animal and plant cells. Okay. But the difference between location of ribosomes with prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells is prokaryotic cells are going to have them, like I said, just scattered freely throughout the cell. We're going to have that in animal and plants, but we're also going to have our ER, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? So one of them is going to have ribosomes on them, and that's the rough ER. Okay? So I'm going to draw little circles here for our ribosomes. over here as well. Okay, so there's our ribosomes on our rough ER. And same thing over here. Okay. 
So since the rough ER guys have ribosomes, we're going to assume that its main function is going to be to make proteins again. All right, same thing as the free ribosomes. All right, they're just gonna be transported into a different area of the cell. So that's pretty much our similarities between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. One, they're all gonna have cytoplasm, the jelly material inside the cell. Number two, they're all gonna have a cell membrane. Number three, they're all gonna have ribosomes. And then number four, they're all gonna have DNA. The main difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells is eukaryotic cells are gonna have the DNA housed in the nucleus. The prokaryotic cells, it's gonna have an area called the nucleoid where the um, DNA is kind of just, just chilling there. It's scattered throughout, okay? So let's start to add more things on here. Um, along with having a rough ER, there's a rough one. Okay, erase that little ribosome there. The smooth ER does not have ribosomes. So a little bit different than our rough ER. Okay, that's our smooth ER. That's our smooth ER there. And its main function, guys, is going to be make or synthesize lipids. Okay. Um, so there is our endoplasmic reticulums. They're usually going to surround the nucleus. Now, since we're getting into um, the ER and we're all done with that, I'm going to add a guy that kind of looks like a Wi-Fi symbol a little bit. He's going to be out this way. Um, this is going to be our Golgi apparatus. Okay. And he's going to be our UPS man. He's going to package the proteins. Make one over here as well. And we'll just draw a line over there. Okay. Um, to finish off the whole protein thing, um, when we are making a protein, guys, and we'll go over this more in a later video, but we're going to start the nucleus. DNA is going to have the instructions for making our protein. That protein is going to go to the rough ER. Well, if we got this new, new, this new protein um, that's just freshly made, we want to always protect it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have these little carrying ports in order to transport them from the rough ER to the Golgi and then from the Golgi to outside the cell. And what these are called are vesicles. Okay? And they simply transport things. Just like the cell membrane, they're gonna be made out of phospholipids. Uh, so it's just essentially an in-caving of your cell membrane. All right, so let's draw some vesicles over here on our plant cell as well. And there's that, all right? So those are the main organelles that function for protein synthesis and then extraction of protein from the cell. So this tells us this, this protein is probably gonna be used outside of the cell. Um, along with having all of these different structures being made in the cell, we need something to clean up our structures. So this is where a guy called the lysosome, lysosome. Okay. He's gonna recycle organelles or even old cells. Okay, go on one right there for our plant cell. And those are going to be in both plant and animal cells. Um, if you're noticing, I'm leaving a lot of empty space in our plant cell. All right. Um, there's one thing that in plant cells that really help to maintain its structure, and that's called a vacuole. So we'll draw that guy in there. Okay. So this is our vacuole. And the vacuole is going to store water. Okay. So I'll vacuole over here. Now in animal cells, the vacuole is not as big. Reason being is in animal cells, we don't really have to worry about storing too much water because if we need water, okay, go get a drink. Plant cells, they can't do that. They can't uproot themselves. But there's also another function for our vacuole. What it does is it maintains the shape of the plant cell. So let's say if the plant has not gotten water for a while, you know, just like you guys at home, you are, you know, maybe taking care of a plant or whatever, and oh crap, I forgot to water it for a week. Well, that plant is actually going to wilt. You're gonna see the leaves are gonna droop down. It's just not gonna look like a happy plant. So the vacuole 
when it has a lot of water in it, it's nice, it's plump, and it's able to maintain that whole cell structure so that the leaves are nice and upright. Um, once the vacuole gets shriveled, when it loses water, the whole cell actually loses its whole integrity. Uh, the whole cell starts to decrease in size. So it almost all encaves in on one another, all right? Now, we're missing one thing on here that we'll go over in a minute that kind of relates to the vacuole, but the vacuole is the big part of the plant cell that maintains its, its cell structure. For animal cells, I'm not gonna draw this because I'm really gonna mess my cell up, so I'll just draw a few here, okay? Um, we are gonna have a cytoskeleton. Okay. These are going to be made of different proteins, um, microfilaments, microtubules, and the cytoskeleton, this is essentially the skeleton of the animal cell. It makes sure it has a nice round structure. All right. and, uh, plant cells, they don't have a cytoskeleton because they have the vacuole. So to maintain cell structure for um, animal cells, it's a cytoskeleton. For plant cells, it's the vacuole. Okay. Now, get back to the plant cell a little bit and we're going to go and draw one more thing in on our um, prokary prokaryotic cell we are also going to have another membrane in our plant cell and if that vacuole loses its shape in other words if it like you know gets smaller shrivels up um, the cell membrane is going to come with that inward but plants also have another membrane that's also going to come inward and that's called the cell wall Okay, the cell wall. Cell wall is made out of uh, cellulose, it's a carbohydrate, and that cellulose is actually what gives your vegetables its crunchiness. So if you've ever like eaten vegetables and um, they aren't as, as crunchy as they once were, you know, you get some fresh vegetables that are very crunchy. But for vegetables that might have been stored in the freezer, um, the cell membrane or cell wall actually breaks and that cellulose is actually no longer intact. That's why the crunchiness is gone. But that wall, that uh, cell wall, is also in our prokaryotic cells as well. So they have a double membrane. Okay? And then the last thing for our prokaryotic cell is I'm going to draw the flagella in. And this is just helping the prokaryotic cell move around a little bit. All right. Um, so we did all of, pretty much all of our cell structures, guys. Um, we're missing one on our animal cell, one major one, and that's going to be our mitochondria. And that's going to make ATP for us. Okay. Um, if you recall, guys, from earlier in the year, the mitochondria goes through cellular respiration, and that's how it makes the ATP. So. Every single cell, no matter what it is, needs ATP. So along with the uh, animal cell needing ATP, the plant cell does too. So let's draw a mitochondria in there. And these uh, diagrams, guys, I know they're getting very congested. We're almost there. So, um, but they, they need to make ATP too. So we'll put that one in there. Difference between animal and plant cells. Animal cells, us, okay, we want to make some ATP. I'm going to go have a coat. I'm going to go, um, I don't know, munch on a burger or something. And we're going to take that glucose in and we're going to convert it to ATP in our mitochondria. Well, plants, they can't do that. They can't be like, hey, you know, hey buddy, you want to go to McDonald's? Like, can uproot themselves and start walking down the road. No, I've, I've never seen that before. But what we can do is we can add another structure into our plant cell. All right. Put that up here. And that's going to be our chloroplast. Our chloroplast is going to be our main organelle. It's going to go through photosynthesis, and that's making glucose. So the glucose is going to be made by the chloroplast, and then that glucose is going to go over to the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is going to take that glucose in, and it's going to convert it into ATP so that the cell can use it for energy. All right. Um, I think that's all of our main organelles guys. Uh, hopefully this helped out a good bit. Make sure you know your differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells and then make sure you know your difference between your animal cells and your plant cells. If you're looking at them, plant cells are square, animal cells are round, 
Animal cells have the cytoskeleton. Plant cells do not. They have a very large vacuole instead. Animal cells, they still have a vacuole. It's just smaller. Um, other things that are different, the plant cell is going to have the chloroplast. The mitochondria is not. All right? And those are your main differences, guys. Um, hopefully all this helped. Uh, we're going to start module one, section two, next video. So if you guys want to uh, view that, um, you can watch that video. Have a good one.